everyone, Sophia here, my great challenge. Uh, welcome back to my Etsy shop, Frenchie and Tubby. I have six items presented to you today and these will be live in the shop Friday at 5 p.m. That would be Friday, July 26. I'm going to start with the one in the thumbnail and this is um, mid-century modern, more like late 50s, early 60s, really cool. Um, a lot of people actually really like those and are still using these. This is a set. Um, it's a smoky glass decanter with the gold stripes, but it's not just a decanter. I have four of the matching glasses. Let me pull them out for you. They're really, really cool. Um, I don't know if it originally came with a tray. I have never seen the tray, so I'm going to assume no. I'm going to give you close-ups on the glasses first. It's in really good condition. Very often you see those and they've been used a lot. And what happens is that the gold is really faded. This one, not the case at all. It's in really, really good condition. So it's smoky glass. You can see that it has this brown um, tint to it. And it has this 22 karat I think it might be 24 actually gold bands a series of gold band with a white band on it so there's four of those obviously they're for liquor um possibly coffee and here's the decanters decanter same thing it's got a really cool almost like a lava lamp design to it um very very skinny neck with the topper now the topper has a tiny tiny chip as you know it happens right here on top I don't think you can even see because it it's so tiny you'll see it on the picture and again uh, it's in really good shape I mean there's a little bit of scratches here and there but overall really good condition and these are really cool um, if you like a moody interior this is perfect you have like a um, dark wood interior and you add um, kind of like a warm light over it and a, a plant dark leaf type plant next to it Ooh, with some kind of gold tray it would look really neat I like this this is cool so um, amaretto any kind of um, you know after dinner type liquor would look great in this it's cool I like this. Scott likes it too. We almost kept it. I think initially it came with six glasses. I've seen it with six glasses. I'm lucky enough to have found the glasses. So it, came, it comes with four. And again, it's late 50s, very early 60s, kind of kitsch um, glass. It's, um, it's bohemian. They refer to it as bohemian glass. So obviously it's from the uh, Eastern Europe region. Okay, next, um, this thing here. So I know I have people who collect pottery, uh, figurines. I know I have people who collect angels. And this is studio pottery. When I saw it at first, I thought it was uh, Polish pottery. And I still think it is. But I cannot verify it. Because the Polish potteries that I've seen look a little bit different. It's very crude for a polish pottery but it's definitely studio pottery and it's signed it's super nice it's very very well made it's an angel that's also a candle holder so obviously you know christmas uh, you put a uh, um a small candle in here and it's handmade hand painted she's darling she's got a kind of like the spaghetti uh hair on it um and yeah, isn't she cute just for a little candle here and I cannot find another one online. So she's signed by hand here. And then she's again signed right here. I cannot find another one. So obviously this is an artist. Um, not known. Could be local. I don't know. I know nothing about her. I've seen similar but nothing like this one. I think she's really neat and she's quite heavy actually well it's clay clay tends to be heavy she's in really good shape um it does have 
a little crack right here, but it's not falling or broken or anything. It's just clay, you know, I mean, clay can be fragile. But look at how cute the curls are right here. And here's the top of the head with the little part in the middle. And she's a no face, uh, kind of like the Amish no face dolls. I think she's really neat. Look at the ball. It's, it's really cool. I like this. I'm telling you, when I saw it, I was like, oh, that looks like polished pottery. And it may very well be. But again, I just can't find another one like it. And I've seen some similar amongst the polished potters, uh, but not just like it. Similar, but not like it. And there's other angel type candle holders uh, with the handle in the front. I guess the design itself is common, but something like that now. So it's very unique. If you're looking for something unique, there you go. Um, and EK is the um, signature. So if I find anything else about it in between now and me writing the post, um, definitely I would write it in the description, but so far, nothing. And I think she's darling. Look at this thing. <laughs> I would totally keep her. Yeah. Okay. When I come back, two more. Uh, let's talk about crystal. Another Mikasa crystal. Uh, this is simple line, but sometimes it's what you need. Um, this is a 1980s Mikasa that was actually part of a line they called High Point. And just like the ones that I was talking about um, last week with the Spring Amaryllis, um, they had a regular line of um, tableware and stemware and then they had a line of giftware and the giftware was quite popular and this is high point giftware and they did quite a lot they did bowls they did platters they did trays and they did um, containers and this is one of their oval platters slash tray it's Mikasa crystal this one is I would say almost like new it still has the Mikasa sticker right here I don't know if you can see it and this is nice because it is modern it's from the 80s but it's still very current because of its modern look it's crystal you can use it for so many different applications this is not just a decorative tray but you can use it in your bathroom just to corral your cosmetics for instance right uh, your beauty potions and stuff, but you can also use it as a platter to serve food. Um, obviously, you don't want to do interchangeable, like pick a lane, okay, what you want to do with it. But it's a beautiful tray. And we were just talking about stuff like that, one of my co-worker and I, because she apparently has a very large family and she's constantly doing um, sweet 16s, baby showers, organizing all those parties and one of the things that she does is create gift baskets and she's constantly looking for things like this because she puts them at the bottom and she uses them to put all the gifts in and she says that those are perfect for that you use it as the base of your um, gift and then you put all your gifts in it and then you do the shrink wrap um, you know with the bow and everything and how about that as an idea that's an additional gift basically when you do um a big gift wrap so yeah this is crystal it's mikasa japan and it's really neat i like it it's modern it's not everybody's cup of tea but it has uses it's very functional and it's beautiful so this is mikasa high point it's a platter a tray um an organizational tool a uh, a gift Whatever you want to do with it. I like it. Okay, moving on. These are super cute. Okay, do you like dogs? Do you have um, Springer Spaniels? These are from the 50s. They're by Ralco. Well, more like the 60s. Otherwise, they would say Occupy Japan. Late 50s, early 60s. Uh, Springer Spaniel. <laughs> they are... Let me make sure I'm in focus. Uh, focus on this, not my face, please on this okay 
they are Springer Spaniel salt and pepper shake so this is one uh, that's ready to pounce or play and I would say that's the pepper has two holes this is hard to keep in focus here we go so it has the two holes on top of his head and the Rocco they're in excellent condition um, sticker with the little cork cap at the bottom and then the other one is seated come on it's very hard when it's small to keep it to focus on and it's giving it its pull and that's the salt it's got three holes on top of it said same thing with the little cork they're so cute they hand painted uh, in Japan so if you have uh, Springer Spaniels obviously you want those and if you know anybody who has them how about that as a gift they're really cute you know, there's so many collectors of salt and pepper shakers. It's a whole world out there of salt and pepper shakers. Collectors. I mean, these people have thousands of them. I had no idea. When I started doing this, that there were people who were collecting that many... Um, I have cat hair. I'm sorry. Uh, it's bothering me. Uh, that many salt and pepper shakers. They, aren't they cute? Look at these darling little faces. And again, it's hard to keep the focus because they're so tiny and there's too much background. So the camera is confused. Refer to my website and you'll see them better. Um, I think they're darling. They're really cute. All right, this, so they're from uh, late 50s, um, early 60s, post 1955. Okay, uh, when I come back, I have two more. Franciscan. Who doesn't remember the grandma having Franciscan uh, in their curio? So, you know, I have a ton of Franciscan desert rose behind me, which eventually I will put up. It's just that it's so much of it. And that one is going to be for replacement purposes only because it's really just a uh, teacup. Uh, but this is just a sugar and a creamer, and it's the apple one. So, it was another one that was also very popular. So this is Sugar and Creamer by Franciscan, um, the apple, and they're really nice. I've seen a lot of those, but I can tell you one thing. Um, the c color is not always very consistent with these because they were hand-painted. And sometimes they, they are a little bit more on the pink side, and sometimes a little bit more on the brown side. These are red. They're red-red. and. I like that about them because when you look at them they really are apples which is a good thing so here's the sugar and they are in pristine condition really are um, so it's an apple button right here and the handles are meant to look like a branch right and look at that really neat um, so that's the sugar and then the creamer on one side it's just a branch and then on the other side it's got the uh, apple with the handle that's a branch perfect condition not a chip no crazing no discoloration and they are very sharp in color really really sharp in color uh, what do they call they, what do they say they're true to color I think that's what they um, they call them beautiful so if you need them for replacement purposes or you're missing them or um, you just want them because they're super cute here they are Franciscan apples sugar and cream set um, and the last item Oh boy, I'm almost skipping that one too. And I'm not just saying that to overhype it. Uh, I just want to mention that I would totally keep it. And I want to keep it, not because it's beautiful. I want to keep it because I absolutely cannot find this vase. And when I cannot find something, 
I am almost making it my life mission to find it. So I did find one person who was selling it and referred to it as a uh, princess house face from princess house uh, from the 60s. And I looked all over um, the online catalogs from princess house, couldn't find it. I went on replacement.com. I went on the collectors. Um, I searched Princess House. I couldn't find anything similar, not even the base. The base, Princess House did, never did any base for any of the vases that look like this. So I am concluding that this is not a Princess House vase. So this is a crystal vase uh, that somebody referred to as a Princess House, but it's not. And I cannot find the maker of this and it's driving me nuts because it's a gorgeous face it really is is this thing black in the background yes but we're gonna show it to you against a black background and maybe you're gonna be able to see look at this thing so it's from the 60s all right it's referred to as an urn face um it has the bottom part, actually, I'm going to talk about it in a second. Uh, so it has this urn look to it. And then it has etching right in the middle. I don't know if you can see the etching, right, with the uh, laurel. Okay. Um, right, so maybe you can see the etching here with the laurel. Right, which is kind of unusual because they're mixing different types of cutting. Then it goes back here and it's got it's got like kind of like the thumb prints here. It's got a little bit more of a design here and then got more etching here and then the base. Alright. Princess House didn't do that. But I tell you who does that. Duron, the French guy, did that. And they referred to it as the cathedral. So I'm starting to think that maybe it's a Jerome, but I looked at all of the catalogs um, and I can't find it either. And this is driving me nuts. And I'm telling you, I could literally spend years trying to figure out who made this. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to put it up for sale. It's crystal. It's got a few scratches here and there, um, but it's handmade. The base is interesting because it's off-centered. So obviously it was hand-cut. Um, if you look at it, I don't think you can see, but there's a part here that's wider here than it is here. So obviously it was hand cut and the inside of it, it's gorgeous. It, this vase is gorgeous. Darn you beautiful. And then the inside of it is actually, is a point. There's so many different things about this vase. It, it just looks like a common vase. It doesn't, you know, when you look at it, it's like, ah, it's a vase. Okay, but no, <laughs> no, because there's so many different things about it. Like if you look at the base right now, right, it's, a, it's like a regular cathedral base. But then each point actually gets tapered out and then back in. And they, they give out into uh, more design here with a band and then you have this band here and then a polished band here and then the thumb prints. Man, I wish I knew who makes this. There's no stamp, there's no signature, it's... I want to keep you. So, somebody was selling it on eBay, referred to it as a Princess House urn vase. And I'm telling you, it's not Princess House. It's not on the Princess House catalog. Um, and Princess House didn't make a single vase with that vase. All of the vases were either flat or pedestal. Not a single one of them had this cathedral. It's a beautiful vase. It really is. 
Uh, so, mystery vase is my last item. Somebody in the comments is going to be like, Sophia, it's a princess house. I have it and I sell the box. Okay, well, maybe I'm wrong. If I am, please correct me because it's been driving me nuts. I'm telling you, I haven't, I haven't seen it uh, on their catalog. So it's a beautiful face. And again, it's got a few scratches here and there, but you know, anyway, that's my last item. Um, and it's rather tall. It's nine inches. So that's the kind of vase because the, um, the mouth is tapered, right? It's perfect for drooping. Tulips, uh, daffodils, kind of, you know, the kind of flowers that you can even do, um, tall stems, but are big flowers that take a lot of room. So a hydrangea would be perfect here because you can kind of angle it a little bit and it gives you a big pom-pom right there. And I gotta let it go. All right, these were my six items coming to the shop. Um, I told you would keep that, the smoky stuff and the angel. There you have it. Uh, all items live. Friday, I'm getting hot. Um, the 26th at 5 p.m. Visit my shop, the link is up here and down below. And you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at My Great Challenge. And that would be it. I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.